Hey friends, thanks for stopping by the house this week for another drink with us. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, first off, we thank you very much. And if you've noticed we haven't had any videos in the past few weeks, it's really because we wanted to take some time to go travel, visit family, we had friends coming in, and it's springtime. As a homeowner, you would know that there's a long list of things that you need to do around the house outside when spring hits. So we really like to buckle down, get those things done and out of the way so we can get back to our fun little hobbies. Work first, play later. Yes, absolutely. So we've got a lot more episodes starting to put together and we're gonna be rolling out. Today, We've actually been kind of holding off on this a little bit, so I'm excited that we're starting back with this because this is one of Dana's favorites, and she just brightens up with cheer each time she finds one of these <laughs> difficult bottles to locate here in Ohio. So now that we have two, and we'll kind of discuss as to why we have two and where <laughs> that's going to go, but Weller and Pappy Van Winkle both are names synonymous with bourbon fame and quality. They're actually tied together. Now, they're tied together way back when. So William LaRue Weller is the son of a distiller he started his wholesale distribution company in 1849. Now, clearly he was distributing bourbon. His business grew into quite a prominent brand of you know, W.H. Weller and Sons. Right about that time, Julian Proctor Van Winkle Sr. I love the name. <laughs> just, just keeps going. Commonly referred to and lovingly referred to as Pappy. He joined W.H. Welder and Sons in 1893 as a salesman. Now, Pappy became notable for his quote of, we make fine bourbon at a profit if we can, at a loss if we must, but always fine bourbon. I, I think that's what uh, William LaRue loved about Pappy as a salesman is he brought in that honesty because William LaRue had the same principles when it came down to making his spirits. After W.H. Weller passed in 1899, Pappy and his co-worker Alex Farnsley actually purchased W.H. Weller and Sons, retaining William LaRue's oldest son George as the president. Now that purchase occurred in 1908. Okay, seeing Seen this seen move. The connection. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, like many distillers, they had an office in Whiskey Run in Louisville, you know, there in Kentucky. So, during Prohibition, Pappy ran sales of quote unquote medicinal spirits <laughs> <laughs> out of this office. And while Alex also became a bank, a bank president, mm -hmm. now another distiller. Arthur Philip Stitzel frequented the building during Prohibition. He probably had an office there too. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I, I love how some of these things just kind of hint as to what was going <laughs> on. And prior to Prohibition, he was actually experimenting with the mash bills of bourbon and ones that didn't use rye. It was common practice back then, the first ingredient, corn, you have to have at least 51% for bourbon. Right. But after the corn, most bourbon distillers were adding in rye. It was a nice, cheap filler. Now, Weller had already kind of made a name for himself of not using rye. He was using wheat, and that's exactly what Stitzel was experimenting with. Mm -hmm. So in 1935, Julian and Alex merged businesses with Arthur and together they formed Stitzel Weller. This was known as the Stitzel Weller Distillery. Mm -hmm. And they actually opened on Derby Day. What a great day for an opening. <laughs> I mean, people are drinking 
on that day. That is a very auspicious day. Yeah. Now, the brand quickly became known for their weeded mash as it created a softer, smoother taste. Something we definitely love. So, Stitzel Weller was sold in 1972. Awesome year, by the way. <laughs> At least for me, it was. It was not a good year for Thurman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a good year for these guys. But they sold it to Norton Simon during a depression of sales. Now, the name then changed to Old Fitzgerald Distillery. That may sound quite familiar to all of you bourbon fans out there. Yep. Now, ultimately, the facility closed in 1992. With the Van Winkle family retaining the original stocks, the barrel aging, and the rights to the bill and name. Now... Which is fantastic when you think about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, since 2002, Van Winkle brands have been distilled at Buffalo Trace Distillery and bottled by Sazerac. Mm -hmm. So, this is where Willer is done, too. Right. So, Sazerac and Buffalo Trace, you know, Buffalo Trace being owned by Sazerac, they have many different brands that they own. And pretty much all, most of these brands are distilled at Buffalo Trace. Mm -hmm. So you have Buffalo Trace, Old Fitzgerald, Weller, Van Winkle. All of those are actually distilled in the same facility yeah. and aged in just about the same brick houses. Yeah. Which leads to very similar mash profiles. Mm hmm You can't help but not to have that. Right. So some people, some reports on the internet are saying that the mash bill between Weller and Pappy and Van Winkle are all the exact same. Now, whether or not that's true is not advertised by Buffalo Trace. Oh, it's no. not advertised by Sazerac or the Van Winkle family. I would tend to believe they're just slightly different, just enough different to give credit to the original Pappy Van Winkle label and to the original Van Winkle labels. Mm -hmm. So why all of the fame? Yeah, what's what's the big thing? There's deal? all this hype. You know, why can you not just go into your local, you know, liquor store and pick up a bottle of Weller at your convenience? Well, it's because the labels, the brand, everything is so tightly controlled, it's harder to find. Now, if you're talking about Pappy Van Winkle, that's impossible to find. And there's a reason for that. One, it's really no longer made. Two, it's aged for a minimum of 15 years, real Pappy. So limited supply, and then you have on top of all of that, famous fans. Names such as Anthony Bourdain have been known to completely just rave about the brand, saying it is really one of the best ones, the best one. In 2018, uh, a local man even gifted the Pope a bottle of original Pappy Van Winkle, who reportedly said it was very good. <laughs> he was definitely trying to set up some things for himself later in life. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. Now, what that translates down to is, even if you do manage to find Pappy Van Winkle, you're not going to be able to afford it. And it's also often counterfeited. So unless you're buying it straight from the you know, retailer, you're not going to really know if it's real Pappy. Mm -hmm. So that Pappy mash profile, they actually add in a little bit of barley malt as well, along with their wheat and their corn. Um, which is very similar to what Weller does and Buffalo Trace and all of that. So the reason that Weller is famous is because Pappy Van Winkle is famous. And the reason Pappy Van Winkle is famous is because, well, it really is a phenomenal bourbon, <laughs> which you can't find. So people in droves stock up on Weller any chance they can. Anytime they see it, they buy it. Oftentimes it just sits on the shelf as a sign of status, which is really sad because at 20 and $25 a bottle, it should be enjoyed. 
Yeah. Yeah. At that price point, why keep it's it there and not so drink delicious. It? If it's that good at that low price point, you just have to enjoy it. You do. Yeah. You it was really made do. to be consumed. Yeah. And in fact, uh Pappy Van Winkle um reportedly isn't even sold. They're very, very specific about who they'll even sell it to to avoid that specific scenario they want people to enjoy it bourbon is made to be enjoyed not sit on the shelf well speaking of that what do we have <laughs> in regards to the two different bottles and what are we cracking first these are both going to be the same mash profile mm -hmm. one is bottled at a much higher proof than the other they're both going to be aged a minimum of two years, up to four years, depending on the flavor and blending. So we have the Weller Special Reserve. This is the most commonly found Weller in stores. Mm -hmm. So this also tap, uh, rings in at right around $20 a bottle for the 750 milliliter. They also sell this in handles. So if you find yourself a handle, you might buy it. It's good. And then we also have the Antique 107. So the Antique 107 is bottled at a much higher proof. So instead of 90 proof, like the Special Reserve, the Antique 107 is 107 proof. So 90 proof, 107 proof. That's the primary difference. Okay. I and I think, do the 107. I think we should pour it into the glasses and then... Swap and then swap. I like that plan. You like that plan? I do. All right. Well, you can open Although your... it's a little less than I'm drinking, but I like that plan. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. What do you smell first? I smell I'm, sweetness, some honey caramel. Well, I was going to say the sweet. Maybe a hint of vanilla. It's caramel for me, not the vanilla. Each time I smell it, I'm picking up something a little different. Di yeah, something a little different on the nose. Now I'm smelling more of the woods. Okay, I gotta go in. <laughs> I can feel the higher proof. That's for sure. Yes. But it is very smooth. Um, does not have the warmth on the back end that I've had from others. Not on the palate. Mm -mm. It really kind of warms you from the inside. Uh, there's no doubt. All the way down on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have the mighty proof. <laughs> it, it's very smooth. Uh, it is a little sweet, which is good. But it's that wheat in the mash gives it that sweeter, smoother taste. That's really nice. It is definitely good where you could just sip it for a while. You really could. Yeah. Yeah. You can sip it. Um, you can make an old fashioned out of it. Oh, here we go with the old fashioned <laughs> again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This isn't one that I would say bourbon and Coke. You definitely no. want to have it in a, a cocktail that you're going to be able to enjoy this sweet profile. Yeah, bourbon and Coke for me is one that I would have to go with a much lower quality bourbon <laughs> where the Coke kind of masks it. Yeah. But this is smooth enough where I wouldn't want to. 
I'm totally different. It is a lot less sweeter smell. <laughs> okay. All right, I, I can understand where you get some of the vanilla from. Less of the barrel or wood taste to it. Mm -hmm. It is lighter. It definitely tastes lighter. It's lighter one. on the palate. Yeah. This one does have that warmth. Almost immediately. Mm hmm This is good. If I had my choice to drink between mm -hmm. the two, yep. it would be the antique. Really? Yeah. And not because I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, are not an antique. <laughs> I like the smoothness and sweeter taste of the antique. It is... A clear difference in taste. I didn't think it would be. It is just different enough. Yeah, to know that you're not drinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. But even looking at them, this one is lighter. The regular Weller is lighter. Yes. Well, I love the side-by-side -side with this so I can actually taste the difference. <laughs> This is very good. We'll have to do another side-by-side -side next week. There you go. Side-by-side-by-side. Side by side. So if you had Weller or a fan of it, regardless of which one it is, post up comments, share share what you actually like about it, what you took away. And I think we are going, or not we, but you, <laughs> Me. you Me. are going to make something special with both of these. Yes. So there are several accounts online of people referring to poor man's pappy. Now, that's because Weller is very similar in mash profile. It's just not aged enough or the proof's not high enough. So people are trying to get their hands on that Pappy Van Winkle flavor profile to enjoy day to day but they can't afford a bottle, no. even if they could get their hands on it. So what some people say is some people say that just buy Weller, buy Weller 12 year, it's poor man's pappy. Uh, Weller 12 year has increased in demand so much that we actually can't find it anymore. Mm -hmm. So other people are saying, well, Weller 12 doesn't have the proof of Pappy Van Winkle, so we blend it with the Antique 107. I actually, I have a slightly different recipe that I'll be sharing in the next video, so you better watch the next oh, one. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one, because <laughs> I have no idea how it's made. So, yes, stay I, tuned for the next episode. I promise I will share my recipe. <laughs> well, thank you all once again for following along. Hopefully it was educational and entertaining, if nothing else. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Stay safe. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.